God bless you. Oh my God. I'm sitting here. I'm in my, uh, one of the ministry's warehouses and today's program is going to be very, very interesting. You know, the Bible says during the end times, there will be several signs that we'll be seeing. And one of these signs that we're going to be seeing and do that we're going to notice is by a certain type of spirit. This riveting program, I'm going to go through some of the principalities that Paul begins to talk about. For the Bible declares in Ephesians that to Ephesians chapter six, verse 12, that we wrestle not with flesh and blood, but principalities. And so many times when the enemy tries to attack us, when he tries to come against us, he tries to make us believe that it's flesh, that it's people, because he is the accuser of the brethren. But the truth of the matter is that we are fighting a spiritual warfare. I pray on this program. Oh God, I already feel a presence here. I pray on this program that not only are you going to learn strategy and those that have been watching and streaming and seeing a lot of the programs and these new teachings, I have been on a mission because there has been spiritual warfare that has been affecting the saints, affecting people's loved ones, affecting people's children. And so I'm going to be doing a lot more in-depth teaching about spiritual warfare. And I pray that this program rebukes the devourer and gives you strategy to know how to fight against it. Father, I ask you right now. Oh, Father, I ask you right now that every believer that is watching this program, give them divine strategy so that they're able to fight against what the enemy is trying to do, that they're able to stop any plague that has tried to come against their household. And Father, anyone that is watching that is believing for salvation, I just felt this in my spirit, my God. Anyone that is watching that is believing salvation for their loved one, do it for them as a sign. Write their book, write their name in the book of the Lamb, Father. This I pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, amen. Now, it is interesting because when we understand the tactics of the enemy, we understand that the enemy cannot see the future. He cannot prophesy. But the way how the demons in the realm of the demonic works is that they can only see past things. I never forget a couple years ago, I was in Africa and someone was assisting me. I had a staff member with me and there was someone that was demon possessed. And while we were casting out the, out the demon, the presence of God came. We were worshiping and the presence of God came. I mean, literally the room shook. Gold dust was appearing. I mean, miracles, notable miracles, healings were taking place. And when the power of God hit, there, it manifested. Just like when the power of God hits, things manifest on people. So for believers, things manifest. We'll start crying or we'll start shaking or we start feeling the presence. But on this particular person, they were possessed and they were dealing with a demonic type of oppression and a particular demonic force began to manifest on this particular woman. And one of the people that was assisting me at that time, they were standing next to me and that woman that was possessed called out something about the man that was assisting me and the man was shocked. He said, how did she know that? Did I get your attention? And the demon knew word of knowledge. So demons do have possess a type of word of knowledge. Remember the demons knew who Jesus was. Son of David, have mercy on me. They knew who he was. They possess word of knowledge. This is one of the giftings that demons have and psychics and people that work or realm work in the realm of the psychic realm, they get information from these forces. So they do possess word of knowledge. And so this man that was next to me was angry at a particular was angry at a particular person in his life. And the demon called out the name of the person that he was angry at and knew the detail about it while I was casting out the demon. So the demonic forces have a sense of something called word of knowledge, word of knowledge. Word of knowledge is one of the gifts that also can flow through the spirit. You see a lot of prophets nowadays, and I love the gift of word of knowledge where they flow in word of knowledge, but be very leery of prophets that just have strong word of knowledge and can't tell you anything about the future. Because demons have word of knowledge. Son of David, they knew who he was. They knew who Jesus was. They were aware of who Jesus was. Now, my assistant at that time, the person that was assisting me, they said, Prophet, how did they know that? How did they 
and he thought that the woman had the gift of prophecy. And I says, no. I said, brother, that's not the gift of prophecy. That's demons. Demons have word of knowledge. And I said, they're able to pick up on things and able to have knowledge of things because they sit in the soulish realm and part of your psyche is stuck there. And he says, what do you mean? I said, you haven't repented yet for it. So this is why forgiveness is so important, saints. This is why it's so important, people. Oh, God, we're already getting into it. Because when we don't forgive, we give place to the devil. And we see this with people all the time. Oh, I don't want to go to that church. They did this to me. I don't want to see this person, or I don't want to see this ex, or I can't be around them. I can't stand them, and I can't do that. You're giving entryway for demonic oppression to come. And this is why Jesus says offenses will come. He says it to us. He says offenses will come. How many times shall you give? Shall you forgive? Seven times 70. And why does he say this? Why does he say this? The reason why he says this is because when you have unforgiveness, you give place to the demonic realm. And that's how they have an entry in. That woman that was demonically oppressed was trying to come into the person that was there. And I had to plead the blood over him. And I laid hands on him too. I'm saying this because there's some people watching me that might have some church hurt. Maybe it's because of a church you used to go to. Maybe it's someone that you used to fellowship. Maybe it's a family member. Maybe it's a loved one. Maybe it's an ex. Maybe it's a parent. Maybe it's a child. You got to let it go. Because it leaves an odor in the realm of the soulish realm, in the atmosphere. And demons look to try to get entry in that way. Now, I'm going to go into Revelation, and then those that are watching, hit like, hit subscribe to my channel. Because over the next couple of weeks, I don't know how much I'm going to put on public platforms, but I'm going to get into some of the end-time prophecy. You don't see a lot of prophets talk about this. You see preachers talk about it, but you don't really hear a lot of prophetic voices go into depth about this. I'm going to be going more into depth about this because we're in the times. And... We're going, and I'm going to kind of speak about the timeline that we are going to witness it in. Everybody wants to know, well, is it pre-tribulation? Is it, is it is the tribulation going to come? Are the believers going to be there? The Bible is very, very clear, and we can know each dispensation because there's seven dispensations. We'll know each dispensation by the seven festivals of Israel, okay? And this is seen in the Old Testament. So you have the Passover, you have the Passover, remember that, blood on the door, unleavened bread, first fruit, then you have what is known as the Pentecost, then you have the trumpets, which is Rosh, uh, excuse me, Rosh Hashanah, then you have the Day of Atonement, which is Yom Kippur, and then you have the Festival of the Tabernacle, the seven-day festival. So those seven dispensations are really the seven cycles that we're going to see it in. But I'm not getting into that today. So make sure you subscribe. And if you're not uh, uh, if you're not a partner of the ministry and you're not coming on to our weekly broadcasts, you're missing out a lot. I teach for hours. I like to teach for hours. There's no video. It's just pure teaching. So people that are looky-loos are not going to get it. But people who are love of the words, they don't need to look at me. They just get good teaching. So make sure you join and also text. Hopefully, my videographer can put that at the bottom of the screen, text, and you have that number there, text, 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 do it now so that you can get and get notified when I'm live, and you're going to love it. Now, let's go to Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12, verse 3. This is going to be, I'm just going to be talking to you because in Revelation chapter 12, verse 3, it talks about the great, the great red dragon. Uh... They call it the dragon or draco in the Greco, but it really means serpent. It's just another way of saying serpent. And you have to understand that when Revelation is written, there's a lot of Greco language that was translated um, or was mistranslated because the Greek language has a lot of ways of saying certain words. So we're going to get into all of this good stuff here. Now, in Revelation chapter 12, verse 3, it begins to talk about the great dragon. Who is the great dragon? It's Lucifer. We know that. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon 
having seven heads. This is the key thing. A great dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. Now, who is this great dragon? This great dragon is Lucifer. And the seven heads that are on the dragon represents the seven principalities that rule over certain districts on this earth. These principalities move from different nations. So when we look at the word principality, we understand that the principality deals with a chief spirit. It's a chief spirit. And a lot of times, this is not, don't quote me on this, but I believe that principalities, they're known as princes because in most cases, I believe, and this is what I believe with the revelation that the Lord gave me, that these are actually fallen angels. They rule over different demonic forces, but they call them prince because they have, they're a chief spirit or prince. And you, you, you'll see that language also being used in Daniel. So a principality represents chief spirit. And when we look at the word principality, uh, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, we do not wrestle with flesh and blood, but principalities, rulers of darkness, wickedness. When it goes into that, principalities really means government. So principalities function over regions through governments, through nations. And I want you to think about this and understand this. Principality, personality. So principalities are prince spirits that work and rule through certain leadership. Now, in Daniel chapter 10, Daniel chapter 10, verse 13, you're able to see a little bit of this and you're able to get a little more understanding about principalities. So in Daniel chapter 10, I believe we're going to verse 13. Daniel chapter 10, verse 13, we get to hear a little more about this. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me for 21 days, but lo, Michael, one of the chief princes. So do you see how they call them prince? Uh, also, you see in the Bible where it calls Lucifer the prince of the air. So there's a certain language where they call them morning stars or princes. And these are really referring to a group of the Elohim that revolted, which were certain angelic beings. Okay. These are not demons. These are fallen angels. You do not see demons being referred to really as princes. So this is why it leads me to believe that there were particular prince spirits, which were fallen angels, that begin to fall. Oh, God, I feel something happening here. Oh, I feel something happening here. Don't you love when the anointing hits you? I mean, it can just comes out of nowhere. You just, boom, it's like fire in your bolts, huh? So we know that these prince spirits deal with angelic or what would be known as certain sons of God. Now, let me go here uh, quickly here. Daniel chapter 10, verse 13. And the kingdom of Persia withstood me for 20 days. Now, the kingdom of Persia, the prince of the kingdom of Persia. Notice that it says the prince of the kingdom. So every nation has a particular prince spirit or principality that tries to rule over it. You look at the world right now and you're saying, why are we allowing certain, certain laws to be passed? We're a Christian Judaic nation, or you're seeing certain nations where you see a strong spirit of idolatry, or you go to a certain nations and you see a strong spirit of suppression of women, or you go to a certain nation and you see a strong spirit that rules over it. You go to certain cities and there's gambling spirits and you go to certain cities and then there's perverse sexual energy, perverse sexual spirits and energy there. You go to certain uh, cities and you see carnality there. You see the lust of the eye. And so what is this? These are principalities that reign over certain cities. I shouldn't be saying this. Ah, maybe I shouldn't say it. You guys want to hear it? Type in the chat room. Type in the chat room if you want to hear it. This is a live broadcast, so type in the chat room if you want to hear it. Because I'm, I don't, I, I, I gotta be cautious on how deep I can go here. So here in verse thirteen, I see you guys. So in verse thirteen, it says, "But the prince kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days below Michael." Now Michael is also prince chief. 
And Michael represents anything that happens with Israel. Michael, the angel, was over that particular region. And the reason why I say principalities or these prince spirits are fallen angels is because if you remember, after the Tower of Babel, I don't have time to go into all of this, but I'm going to give you a little bit. After the Tower of Babel begins to happen and humanity uh, lose languages, the languages are confound because before the Tower of Babel, there was only one language on the earth. The animals and humanity all communicated. Even animals' language gets confused as well. That's why we can't speak to animals the same way as we used to be able to speak to. Prior to that, Josephus, the historian, does a whole uh, liturgy on that. But I'm not getting into that. Do you see why you got to join my school of prophets? Oh, God! But, so, after the Tower of Babel begins to happen, God puts certain angels over certain districts. You remember, because he separates... Uh, humanity and sends them on the four corners of the earth. And so when this separation begins to happen, this is where you get all the different races, all the different beautiful colors and everything like that. It's so interesting. You see people say, I don't see color. And it sounds good in theory, but God made all of these beautiful colors. <laughs> so when I hear people say that, I look at them and says, well, if you don't see color, that means you're color blinded because God made so many beautiful colors. So when he splits them and all the and all the humanity gets all split right, then you get all the different you get all the different they go on the four corners of the earth. And each of them took a particular thing. There was one group that left and they took learning knowledge of water. There was another group that left and they took learning knowledge of earth. There was another group that left and took learning knowledge of fire. There was another group that left that took learning knowledge of air. So the group that took and so when you get the four when you get the four, uh, you get the four elements of the earth. Each of humanity gets separated, and each of them take a sacred knowledge of one of the elements. So you have one group takes air. This is seen through the region of the Asian. Another group takes earth. This is seen through the region of North America, the Native Indian. One group takes learning fire. This is seen through the European. They had to learn that because it was cold there. They had to learn fire. And one group learned water. This is the group of the African. Odd. What am I getting into here? That's too deep. That's my school of the prophets. But when they get separated, God installs certain principalities. And these principalities, are they're, they're a form of angels. And these angels were to be watching over. Now, we know about the revolt because some of them found humanity or was attracted to humanity and did something perverse. They had sex with them and they did something very, very, very perverse. Can I go a little deeper, saints? Type in the chat room. I'm going to type something in there. I'm asking you guys if I can go a little deeper. Can I go a little deeper? Pop. Now, oh God. So there was a group of principalities that was over each region. And there were certain principalities that fell. They went under Lucifer regime. And these principalities ruled over certain regions. And there were seven particular ones. And this is why you see the seven-handed dragon. Now, let me give it to you because in the Old Testament, you see these seven different spirits manifesting. You had the one that manifested in the Egyptian empire, spirit of bondage, the Assyrian empire, spirit of uh, division, the Babylonian empire, spirit of confusion, the Midian Persian empire, spirit of frustration, the Greek, the, 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 the Grecian empire. OK, that's a spirit of 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 almost a spirit. Remember how the Bible says in the last days, men's knowledge will Expedient philosophy, mixed knowledge, new age. That's where that all comes from. And then you have the Roman Empire. And that particular spirit is what is principality, is what is reigning over America. Put the White House on the screen. That's what's reigning over America. Did I get your attention? Now, and then the Bible says it was seven-headed, and then there's a seventh one. And the seventh one is the one that rules over what's going to come. And this one 
<laughs> God. This is the one that rules over the Antichrist. The Bible speaks about this militant ruler that will come into power, a man of valor. We know this because of the way the Bible describes it. And this is really him when they, when we see the picture of the man riding the white horse. It's not Jesus, the first man. There will be one. When Jesus comes, he's wearing the diadem, but this is a different crown. And Revelation speaks about this. But this is the Antichrist, and he will be ruled by the seventh-headed, the seventh-headed uh, principality. And we'll get into that if we have time. But let's go to Romans chapter 8, verse 15. Because I want to talk a little bit about this and understanding this. And oh God, it is so important that we teach on this. No one is talking about this because we're in an age now. The Bible in Revelations talks about the different types. You see the seven, the seven churches. But it also goes into detail about when we get close to the end, there'll be the sixth dispensation of the church or the last church which will be the lukewarm church people that are not we're in an age now where we're seeing preachers sound like motivational teachers you know you can't tell the difference it's like what's going on here well it's the age it's the dispensation and the bible speaks about that we're going to be getting into some stuff here now in romans chapter 8 romans chapter 8 verse 15 it speaks about this first one, and this was the one that was, this principality was a principality that was ruling over Egypt. Romans chapter 8, I see some of my partners in the chat room, so some of them know where I'm going with this. Romans chapter 8, verse 15, For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of an adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself bear witness with our spirit. It's a witnessing spirit. Now, let me go back here. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage. I want to make sure my mic is good because you guys need to hear me really good here. So when it talks about the spirit of bondage, which they have received before, this is referring to a, the spirit of bondage, which is a principality that ruled over Egypt. Now, I want to be clear here. I'm showing you in the Old Testament principalities that ruled over different nations. These principalities do move. Just like I said before, the principality that was ruling over Rome, of the Roman Empire has moved and it rules over America. And how do you know that? Well, if you look at America, America has taken a lot of the same type of thing in the Roman Empire. I said earlier, I said, put on, put the uh, picture of the White House. You look at the White House. You can see the Roman influence, the pillars, the way how democracy is done the way how they do, the way they do it. They did not want a theocratic type of government. They was whatever the people want, whatever the population has, whatever the people demand. It's nothing to do with God. And we're entering into that age right now where whatever you want is permitted. You don't want to be a girl today. You can be this. You don't want to be that. You can be this. You can be this. You can be that. You can say I'm this. You can say I'm that. Where people are just, it's a spirit. It's a spirit. So here in Romans chapter 8, verse 15, for you have not received the spirit of bondage to fear. This is referring to the spirit of bondage. And this was, uh, is a prince spirit that ruled over the Egyptian empire. And this is seen with the children of Israel. This was a spirit that Moses had to fight against. Tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Now, this principality ruled through Pharaoh. Remember, Pharaoh had such a hardened heart. He was ruled by this demonic entity. And if you go back and if you look at the Egyptian empire, this spirit was not only ruled that way, but they also had deities. The calf was one of the deities that ruled them at a particular time. So this particular prince spirit has some type of adoration or some type of thing when it comes down to the bull or the calf. Okay. And this is also could be the spirit that also moved in certain parts of India. And this is why you see such a holiness or such a worshiping of the calf. So this particular spirit, spirit is a spirit of bondage. Now, this spirit can also come against us, and it has demons that are under it as well. 
And what does this do? It comes by infiltrating bondage. So bondage around something that you can't get rid of. This spirit comes up through addiction. This was one of the things that you see take place with the children of Israel. They were addicted to their bondage. Do you remember how they were complaining and they wanted to go back after they got freed? Remember how they were complaining about the food because they were addicted about that? Remember how they started to re-worship the golden calf? So this is a spirit of bondage. Bondage is always connected to a form of addiction. Bondage is always connected to a form of addiction, whether it's an addiction that you're aware of or whether it's an addiction that you're unaware of. This is the way how this principality begins to work through. Now, let's go to 2 Kings. Let's go to 2 Kings chapter 17, because I want to get into this next spirit or this next principality that is seen through the Assyrian Empire. And this one is one that is functioning very strongly today, very strongly. And the Bible speaks about the seven-headed dragon and these spirits. You're going to have to be able to identify it, people. You're going to have to be able to identify it. Very important. Second Kings chapter 17. Let's go there. Let's go there. I have a couple people here while I'm teaching. They like to sit around here while I'm teaching, so I have some friends and a couple of well I guess they're partners that that are here listening to me teach and they're 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 just they're they're loving this teaching you can't see them but they're here so second kings chapter 17 second kings chapter 17 it speaks about the assyrian empire the fall of samaria and the captivity of israel so there were a particular tribe and the Assyrians come in and they begin to split the tribe, okay? We begin to see here how this begins to take place. And walked in the, verse 8, and they walked in the statues of the heathens whom the Lord cast out from before the children of Israel and the king of Israel which they made. And the children of Israel did secretly those things that were not right against the Lord and their God. And they built them high places in all these cities from the towers of the watchmen to the fence down. And they set them up in image, images and groves in every high hill and under every green tree. Now, this happens where they get back into idolatry because the Assyrians create division. And this is a particular principality. And so we see in the Assyrian Empire a principality that was ruling, which is the spirit of division. The spirit of division is one of the most prolific spirits that are running rampant right now, especially in our culture, especially in our world. One moment it's the Me Too, women against men. Then after it's women against men, then it's conservatives against liberals, Republicans against Democrats. Then it was black against white. You remember that? Black against white. Black people not liking white people, white people not liking black people, black people blaming white people, white people blaming black people. Come on, let's talk about it. It's a spirit. It's a spirit, people. And this spirit is a spirit of division. And it's very interesting because there's certain traits about this spirit. One of the traits about this spirit, oh God, I feel an anointing. One of the traits about this spirit is that this spirit comes through gossip. So when you see people gossiping, and you know people in the church, church people love to do that. After church, I want, just want to tell you, did you hear about sister so-and-so? Did you hear what this person did? Did you hear what this one, did you hear about the pastor's wife? Did you hear about this pastor? Did you hear that this person's having a thing? They don't pray, they want to gossip. Well, I'm just telling you, brother, because I want you to pray, but did you hear? It's a spirit, and the spirit of division comes through gossip, misinformation misinformation. I want to show you something. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 6. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 19. Because this is a spirit that is running, and this is a spirit that causes people to have such hatred towards two different sides. You've never seen it. You've never, there has never been a time that there has been such dissension in the country. There has been such dissension on both sides, such dissension, such disdain, such hate. I'm not saying 
I'm not saying on this side. And this is a spirit. Do you remember where, oh, hallelujah, I feel an anointing right now. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Do you remember when the angel of the Lord comes and visits Joshua? And Joshua draws his sword and says, which side are you on? And what did, the, what did the angel of the Lord say? Because the angel of the Lord, is that's a, theoph that's a theophonic representation of the Christ, but that's a whole nother sir. But what did the angel of the Lord say? He says, I'm on neither side. The spirit of division constantly tries to taunt you by making you pick a side. You got to pick a side. Are you for this president? Are you against this president? Are you for this? Are you against this? Are you for this? Are you against this? And what did the angel of the Lord say? He says, I'm not neither. 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 I want to get into a little bit on how this spirit works. How this spirit works. How it works. Let's get into the seven deadly sins. When we go into other writings, the seven deadly sins are not only seven deadly sins, but they're also the seven deeds that made each principality fall. There were seven particular angels that fell. Now it talks about pride. We know that's how, how Lucifer fell. A proud look, a lying tongue, a hand that shed innocent blood. That's Lucifer. So each principality committed one of the seven deadly sins in the heavenly kingdom and they fell. It first started with Lucifer and the Bible says his tongue took a third. His, 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 excuse me, his tail took a third. When we go to verse 19, Proverbs chapter 6, verse 19, one of my faithful partners, one of the students here of the ministry, put that in the chat room for me. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 19. A false witness that speaketh lies. So this spirit of division comes through a gossip spirit and a spirit that speaks lies. Misinformation. We're in an age right now where there's a lot of misinformation. You go on this, you go on that, you go on this social media, one person saying this, another social media, one person said this. You don't even know what to believe right now because there's a lot of misinformation. This spirit of division works through misinformation and it's rampant in the church. It's rampant in the church. You will never see a demon fighting another demon you will never see a witch hexing another witch. You'll never see a warlock warlock cursing another warlock. You've never seen all throughout the Bible. I've scammed it. I've looked. I've looked. I've looked. I've looked. I've looked. I've scammed. I've looked. I've looked. You've never seen a demon fight another demon. But you'll see another preacher talk about another preacher. We're in that day now. And it's such a strong spirit that even when you go on social media, the people that get the views are people that are talking and creating division. It's a spirit. Oh, God, my God. I'm telling you, but I'm on this sucker. I said I'm on it. It's a spirit. It's a spirit. Okay. And it comes and it tries to divide. And it comes with a lying tongue. And it comes to create offenses. This is how this spirit works. It creates offenses so that it diverts you from the mission and the calling of God. So the first thing we know that it speaks lies. So these are the people that shows lies, people that are saying stuff, talking their mouth. I was somewhere and someone came, they're actually a partner of the ministry. And they were saying, oh, prophet, I, I, did you, did, I heard this person say this and they said this about you. And I said to them, and I noticed, and I, and I was so on and I was so on and I was so on and I said, why would they feel so comfortable with saying that around you? Well, prophet, I just wanted you to let me know. And I had to rebuke that person. I said, there's a spirit of division on you. You're sowing tears in the kingdom. And people that are sowing tears in the kingdom against men of God, against women of God, against leadership, woe unto you. Woe unto you. To spirit. Because this spirit does not want people in the body of Christ to work together. There's many members in the body of Christ. This spirit tries to separate the members so that they, they're not functioning together, so that the prophets are not functioning with the pastors and the pastors are not functioning with the teachers and the teachers are not functioning with the apostles 
and the apostles are not functioning. You, do, 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 do you, do you, are, are you, are you, are you getting what I'm saying with the evangelists? And so you have all these little, all these little kingdoms, all these little self-proclaimed ministries, but nobody wants to work together because the spirit of division is rampant. People taking cars and driving them over people. Another human taking a car and driving it over someone because of the spirit of division. So it first comes through speaking lies, false witnesses, lies. Then it soweth discord among the brethren. So it does this false information or so discord of gun among the brethren. Discord. People don't trust each other. People don't, they don't trust you. They're, they don't trust each other. And the reason why he does discord, because the Bible says, given it shall be given unto you, pressed down, shaken together, shall men give unto your bosom. God always uses people to give unto you. So when he has discord, it can stop your harvest. It can stop your blessing. It can stop the blessings from coming into your hand. Stop the blessings to coming on you. Can you take one more? So the first one is the Egyptian one, spirit of bondage. It works through addiction, controlling you, keeping you off of the will of God through something that you're addicted to. Then the spirit of division. It works through lies, sowing tears of division in the kingdom. I feel such an anointing right now because someone is being de delivered right now. And if you're being convicted right now because of this message, you might have not known that that spirit of division was on you. You thought you were doing a good thing just to tell someone, I don't want this, I don't want this, I don't want, I don't. Maybe you thought that, but God says that let this word convict you. Or maybe you have someone around you that you love but they, you thought they were your friend, they, they are a friend, but they always have a spirit of division. They're always telling you or bringing you back information about someone to try to cause this division between your brothers and your sisters. I rebuke it now under this anointing. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Oh, hallelujah. There's so much power in this word. God. I'm going to give you one more. I'm feeling something right now. Oh, God. I'm feeling something right now. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I want to go to the Babylonian Empire, and we're going to talk about this. The Babylonian Empire. Put something, put that on the screen, a big tower. Put a big tower on the screen because we're going to talk about this principality that ruled over Babylon and what this principality is. We're talking about the seven headed dragon and each principality, the seven principalities that rule on this planet. This is a message that you don't want to miss. Now put a big tower because we're going to talk about the Babylonian Empire and which principality ruled that. These principalities rule on other nations. Put the big tower on the screen now. Now, you see that tower? The Babylonian Empire was ruled by a particular spirit which was known as Bala or Babel. Come back to me. And so when we look at the Babylonian Empire, we look and see in the word Babylonian, Babel. We're going to talk a little bit about this. This is seen in Genesis 11. Let's go there. So one of my good students put it in the chat room, the scripture. I love the word of God. I love the precious word of God. You know, I have certain parts don't judge me, but I have certain parts of my Bible that rip because these are places I've had this Bible when I got ordained. So I've had it for, I don't know, uh, 15 years. And, uh, there's certain scriptures I've cried on and the word of God is so precious. It is so precious. Where would we be without the word of God? It's 
something that helps us. We don't idolize it, but it's something that helps us know more about the master. And so this is why we have to really, really know the word to understand who he is and who we are in God. Now let's go to Genesis 11. Genesis 11 talks about the Tower of Babel, and this is very interesting because this was one of the second principalities that really came against humanity. The first one was uh, the principality that ruled over, the, the, which was Lucifer that came. But the second one that we really see this transgression is the Tower of Babel. And this is a particular spirit. Now, in Genesis 11, verse 6, And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language. And this they begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them, which they have imagined to do. Do you imagine the type of power that, because it was all one language and there was such a unity between humanity at this point, there was no division. Uh, anything that humanity or anything that was imagined, they were able to do because there was a type of knowledge. Now, when it talks about that there was all one language, part of this language was telepathic. We get remnants of this language when you think about someone and they call you, or you say something at the same time. This was a language because every human was able to communicate through the collective consciousness at once. But also when the languages was one, we all felt what each other felt. I want you to really understand that. So if one human being was heard, all of the human beings felt that. If one human being was doing something unrighteous, all of them felt that. So this was a connectivity that took place even on the psyche realm, which deals with the mind, the soulish realm. This was also during the time that when this took place, humanity was able to remember things a lot more deeper because they were able to connect more to their blood knowledge. Now, this is very interesting because the blood knowledge deals with your ancestry. And so when all the languages were one, humanity was able to pull information or know things by the spirit or by or intuitively. Um, but this is a whole nother thing. This is why you have to join my school of prophets because I get in, into all of that, all of that when that begins to take place. And so when one person was doing something bad, the all, everyone kind of would knew it. So in some ways, we all possessed word of knowledge during this phase, okay? Because we were all connected. And this was not only humanity, this was also everything in humanity. So during this time prior, humanity was able to speak to animals. We were able to speak to trees. We were able to speak to stones. We understood what they were saying because there was only one language on this planet. And there's remnants to in my school of prophets where I go into, into this, that part of this one language was a language that would be telepathic. And telepa telepathy deals with the ability to project thought. We use words now during the fall to project thought. But there was a time that thought was able to be projected to anyone through the one language, through the mind. This changes after this principality comes into power. Oh, God. Let's go to verse 7. Genesis 11, verse 7. Go to, let us go down there and confound their language that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Therefore is the name of it called Babel. That's where you get the word Babylonian. We're getting into that principality. Because the Lord did there confound the language of all of the earth. You see that? Not just humanity, all of the earth. So after this begins to take place, there was tribalism. And this took place in the animal world. 
So now only the dogs speak to the dogs, the cats speak to the cats, the ants speak to the ants. And it continues to take place. And now there's tribalism even within humanity because of this particular grievance that begins to take place. This is why tongues are so powerful, because tongues brings a unity between our brothers and sisters in Christ to speak the original tongue. Now, there's a lot of things that we get into there where we go into the Enochian language, which some believe was the last person that had remnants of this language, because part of this one language that existed, there are some people that believe that this was an angelic tongue. I am not writing, remember Paul, I'm not writing in the language of angels or men. So there is an angelic language that the universe hears and adheres to. When God said, let there be, he was speaking in the angelic language and angels understand this language. When the languages are scattered on the earth and all upon the earth, this is when humanity came denser into matter and lost the ability to communicate with the angelic kingdom. <laughs> so this is why the Bible says, do you not know that you're entertaining angels unaware? Because we don't have the language, a particular shield or a particular veil has been created. Because anything that we do not have the language to say begins to create a veil. There's a particular color, uh, kind of interesting, and I get into this in my school, the prophets, word locks. Word locks. Um, words lock or words unlock. But there's a particular tribe that can see a particular color. Now, to us, it's a particular shade of blue. We cannot recognize the two different shades of the blue. They're very close, but we cannot recognize it because we don't have a word for it. But because they have a word for it, they're able to recognize these two different colors of blues. And science marveled at it. Because if we cannot put a vibrationary tone to it, it cannot exist. <laughs> and so this is why when humanity loses part of the language or the Nakian language or the original language, now we get it back when we get filled with the Holy Ghost. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, thank you, God. Thank you, Father. We get it back. When we get filled with the Spirit, we get back our original language. But when we lost the language, it created a veil. And so this is why the spirit realm became more of a shadow to us, especially to the unbeliever. So Babel is a spirit, and this is a spirit of confusion. Okay? I want to be clear here. This is the third principality. So we talked about the Egyptian, the Egyptian, the principality that ruled over Egypt, spirit of bondage, addiction. We spoke about the spirit of principality that ruled over the Assyrian Empire. That's a spirit of division. Then we got into the Babylonian Empire, and that's a spirit of confusion. And we're watching this spirit come against humanity. Nowadays, there's so much confusion. People don't know if they want to be a man, if they want to be a woman, if they want to be a boy, or what they identify as, or whatever. What is this meaning? It's a spirit of confusion. Now, I'm not being judgmental. Because this spirit can affect anyone. It can affect me. It can affect you. It can affect, it can cause confusion in our house. The spirit of confusion creates misunderstandings. You ever had a misunderstanding? It's a spirit of confusion. And the way how the spirit of confusion works or comes against you is creating misunderstandings or things that will happen in your life that makes you lean on your own understanding. It works through your own understanding. This is why the Bible says, lean not to your own understanding. 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 Because if you lead to your own understanding, that's the flesh and the spirit of confusion will come. And we're watching it taking place right now. There's so much confusion happening right now. There's so much confusion. People are calling right, wrong, wrong, right. There's so much confusion. So many people I don't identify as this, I identify as that, I identify as this, I'm this, I'm that. There's so many things even with pronouns now. Now, you can get in trouble by using the wrong pronoun mistakenly. I'm not talking about doing it just to be mean or just to be nasty. I'm talking about mistakenly, unknowingly, and people will get upset at you because it's a spirit of confusion and it's changing every day. 
This is why we cannot lean to our own understanding and we have to be ruled by the Spirit of the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God. There's four more principalities, but I'm going to do it on the next program because I'm feeling stirred right now. I'm feeling such an anointing. I know, I know, I know, I know. I will post another one up where I go into the other four because I, I just, it, it's just too deep. It's just too deep. It's too deep. It's too deep. It's too deep. But I'm feeling someone right now watching me and there's been a spirit of confusion that has tried to come against your home. Spirit of confusion. Or maybe it's a spirit of division. That principality. Mothers fighting against their kids. Mothers fighting against daughters. Fathers fighting against fathers. Fathers don't like their sons. Sons don't like their fathers. Mothers don't like their daughters. Daughters don't like their thing. Husbands and wife fighting. A spirit of division. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you right now. I feel a tremendous anointing. Let that camera zoom into me because I want to talk to you now. That we rebuke every spirit that has tried to come against, that has tried to exalt itself under the knowledge of God, that we come against it. Maybe it's a spirit of addiction that's trying to affect a loved one right now. Maybe it's a spirit of confusion that has been over a child's mind. Maybe it's a spirit of, 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 of bondage that has been over you. Something that you're doing that you're saying, God, I want to get out of this habit. I want to get out of this. I want to stop doing this. You can speak over it and you can rebuke it now. Father, I, I just get stirred and I had to stop teaching because... There's so many more. I have so many more notes. I have so many more things to say. I have stuff marked here, but I had to stop because I feel something right now. Father, we come to you. We know that we can't do nothing. Even your son said, I can do nothing. Allow your Holy Spirit to convict them. Not condemn them, but convict them. So that they're able to repent and able to hear your voice. And we bind any attack of the enemy. We come against any attack of the enemy. Satan, you have no authority here. I said, Satan, you have no authority here. And I rebuke it now in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. I'm feeling something right now. There is something that is happening here for people's loved ones. Maybe it's a loved one that got off track or, 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 or has chosen another route that you know that is not of God or has someone in their life that's creating confusion and division between you and them. I come against it right now under this anointing and I rebuke it. Ah, Yes, Father. And we come against it now in Jesus' name. Amen. We're setting up a conference for the School of the Prophets. If you like this teaching, I go a lot deeper into the mysteries and the mysticism of the Word of God. I want to ask you, though, as we're building the School of the Prophets Center, Yes, a center that we're building. We're believing God to raise $22 million to build a center, a school. A school of the prophet. Where people can come all around the world. I'm asking you to sow into this. There's a number on the bottom of the screen or you can go to my cash app. Make sure it's MJ Prophecies, plural. It's so sad in this day that there are people that will make fake pages and fake things to act like me. It's MJ Prophecies, plural. P-R-O-P-H-E-C-I-E-S. That's the only one. That's my only cash out. I want you to sow into this. Maybe God is stirring you to sow $1,000, $100, $50, 200 There's someone watching me that you feel stirred. You're saying, I got to sow into this. I want you to sow to help us build the center. Just none of this funds go to me. It goes to building the center for the School of the Prophets. Stay connected with this ministry. And if this teaching blessed you, send it to someone that you feel that needs it. The Holy Spirit will guide you. Share it with someone. I'll talk to you soon. Remember, Jesus is on the throne.
all. We have a high priest interceding for you and I. Love you. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.